guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are doing a Bible study and we have titled this one, Waiting to Bloom. And it is inspired and based off of the quote by Mary Davis that says, even in the dark soil, a seed is becoming something beautiful. We came across this quote and we thought it was really inspiring and, and it was meaningful to us. And so we thought that we would share that with you guys, what it meant to us. So like she said, we titled it, Waiting to Bloom. No one likes waiting to bloom. Sometimes it's difficult and often discouraging. It can test our faith and even cause us to wonder if God even cares or if he's listening to our prayers or our requests of him. We all go through a season of waiting though, whether it be a promotion at work, um, a prayer of good health, or any other answered prayer, or maybe you're just asking God how he wants to use you and you're waiting for answers or what direction you should be heading with your life. All of these things require patience, hope, and trust. So we're gonna talk about those three things, patience, hope, and trust. First is patience. So this is, when we talk about patience, we're talking about finding contentment in knowing that God is for us and he is working to better us. If you're putting God first, goodness and blessings will follow. Alexander Den Heyer once said, when a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower. Through the waiting period, we should put our efforts into building a stronger, closer relationship with God. And we say we because we're not perfect either and we also go through difficulties and periods where we're looking for answers and um, health scares and just any kind of life struggles. We go through those too and it's not easy to wait and we're learning that little by little. One of the hardest things for us is realizing that this doesn't always mean that we're gonna get what we want because a lot of times what we think is best for us isn't. But it means that if you have God on your side and you're focusing on Him, he wants the very best for you. And when we patiently wait, it honors God. It shows him that we believe that he is a good God and that he is working on our behalf and that he is faithful in his promises to us. Even if you can't see the sunshine yet, strong roots are forming so that you will be more firmly planted when you do sprout. So the second topic is hope. And I kind of split it up in two different things which the first one's pretty short. Hope for ourselves. And I thought that Philippians 4.13 went really well with this. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we should find hope when we're struggling for something um, that we're wanting or we're having difficulty finding the strength to get through a certain situation. We should put our hope in Christ because if you're a Christian, then he will give you what you need and he will give you that strength if you ask for it to make it through that so that you can share what he did for you and glorify God through that. For all other circumstances that you would go through, we thought that John 10.10 10 went along with that. And it says, The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and life abundantly. So Christ came to give us life and life abundantly, just like that verse says. And all the other things that are not things that build you up or help you to live more abundantly came from the enemy. So when we're going through struggles and difficulty, we need to put our hope in the one who brings life. The next topic is trust. And we're going to read a quote by Bob Golf. It says, the way we deal with uncertainty says a lot about whether Jesus is a ahead of us, leading, or just behind us, carrying our stuff. That's so true. Mm -hmm. I know my husband is a good example of this, and he is always just like even killed. Like he's, he's never like super anxious or excited about anything. He's always just like, it's okay. There's nothing we can do about it. It'll be how God wants it to be. And if it's not how we like it, then we'll just find a way to deal with it. And there's no point in fretting and worrying and having anxiety over it. Me, on the other hand, I struggle with that <laughs> quite a bit more. But I strive to be more like my husband in that way. Isaiah 55.8 says, 
For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. When we try to do things our own way and in the time that we want it, it distances us from God and he picks up on that we're not giving him our full trust and in knowing that he's going to take care of us. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which is one of my personal favorite verses. Not that I, I mean, they're all good, but like one that really has always just been a life motto for me is trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all ways and he will direct your paths. So God's all, he's just waiting there for us to call on him and ask him to lead us and guide us and show us what is good for us and what is going to help us have a better life. Lamentations 3.25 says, The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the ones who seek him. The more that we seek God, the more clarity he will give us in what he's doing in our lives. So we should trust God because he's fighting on our behalf, like I said a while ago. And even though you may be in dark soil right now, he hears your cries and is working things in a way that will help you blossom bigger and better in the future. We find our waiting periods to be much more bearable when we focus on things that God has done for you in the past and how he is a faithful God. So when you're humble and grateful for what God has given you and you make sure you're counting your blessings every day instead of focusing on the negativity, it'll show your gratitude towards God through that. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. The Lord is good to those who depend on him, to those who search for him. So if we are seeking out God and trying to build our relationship with him, instead of... Um, Instead of just asking for things from him and then expecting that he should just give them to us because we ask for them, we should be putting our time into growing our relationship with him. And this verse tells us right here that the Lord is good to those who depend on him. So if we're forming that relationship with God and growing stronger and stronger in that relationship with him, it shows him that we're dependent on him and that we love him and then in turn, he is good to us. And whenever I was doing this study, it reminded me of something one of the elders in our church always used to say whenever he was with us. And that was at the end of um, our Bible studies, a lot of times he would say, I just want you all to know that God loves you and wants the very best for you. And that's, that's something really simple that we've probably heard many times, but he was so passionate about sharing that with people that, yeah, there's a lot of rules and, and things in the Bible of, of what God wants of us, but ultimately God loves us. And for the, those who follow after him, he's going to be good to us. And so I think it's a great thing to remember. So while you're waiting to bloom, be patient, put your hope in God, and trust that the Lord knows what he's doing in your life. So that's it for this one. We hope that maybe it helps somebody through their waiting period. Um, I know that I'm glad that I have those notes in my little notebook so that I can look back on it later whenever I might be going through a time like that and it can give me some hope and inspiration. We hope you guys have a good rest of the week. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.